Today we'll again take a look on CFM 56-5B which belongs to A320 and today's topic will be about N1 speed sensor about this long thing. So let's take a look at it. Here is our N1 shaft speed sensor and it goes all the way inside of the core and on N1 shaft you can find flywheel thanks to which the speed sensor know uh, how many uh, rotations uh, the shaft made uh, because on the flywheel you can find tooths and thanks to those tooths uh, those tooths interfere with the magnetic field of uh, uh, of sensor and thanks to that uh, spin sensor know how many rpms uh, has n1 shaft so that's uh, one connector that is important to mention that uh, on the flywheel one of the two is smaller and the reason for that is that we need to know where is the blade number one and thanks to this tooth, we know exactly the position. From the end reference point, we know that uh, the fan made one uh, rotation. Okay, I need to pause the video and correct a few informations, which you already get from me. N1 sensor is inductive type of tachometer. It consists of three independent sensing elements, which are magnetically and electrically insulated from each other. Each sensing element includes magnet, winding and pole piece. These sensing elements are hermetically enclosed in a stainless steel housing. The sensitive elements then transmit the signal through the conductors embedded in metal tube. As a next, I would like to talk about N1 shaft because we don't really have their flywheel. We have their sensor ring mounted on the fan shaft and on it we can find 30 teeth. We can find it here in front of bearing number 2. I just forgot to record it when I had a chance, so sorry for that. Now, regarding that one special tooth, it is thicker, not shorter. And uh, this tube generates a signal of greater amplitude used as a phase reference for the train balancing processed by engine vibration monitoring unit. And since I cleared that, we can continue in the removal. So we have channel A, channel B. And the third one is connection to engine vibration monitoring unit. And we're talking about the channels of the FADEC. Yeah, so brain of the airplane communicate with uh, with the speed sensor so that's why we have so many connectors okay uh, those that's our those are connectors we need to also prepare a bucket because uh, it leads all the way to forward sump and uh, if you want to know what is forward sump I made a separate video about it so link will be in description and uh, in uh, top right corner so click on it or later on take a look and we'll continue with this. So, connectors are protected on the cable and of course on the sensor as well. And we can start with uh, removal. It holds basically only on two screws, so it's very easy to remove it. But of course you need to be careful with this sensor. And it's slowly popping out. And the oil start dripping already. But it's expected. Now we'll slowly pull the sensor out. And as I said, it's around 50 centimeters, so it's a long. And there you have it. Here is our M1 speed sensor and it's, I'm not able to get it in actually in the shot. So <laughs> this is it. And we can uh, install the other one. We need to replace O-ring. 
So, old one out, discard. And the new one, with the oil and install on the shaft. Now, new sensor. Need to be sure that it's completely clean. Nothing is allowed to have it on. And for that, you should use a piece of tape. So, we'll try to remove everything what can remain on the magnetic tip because that can lead to misreading. And once we are done with that, we can proceed with installation. So let's push it in. Slowly. Yes. Now, since the sensor is inside, we need to measure the gap between the sensor and uh, mounting surface. Reason for this is that sensor is spring-loaded and we need to have a correct value in between. And the mine is in limit, which is great. And that means that I can continue with installation. Okay, before we continue with installation, we need to lubricate the bolts. With uh, graphite based uh, Vaseline. And it is recommended to use two wrenches at the same time to uh, tie this to cause any twist to the sensor. So I'll just tie it a bit so the screw which will sit on position. Okay. And now the other one. Okay. And now slowly proceed. A few moments later. And in the end, torque it with a torque wrench. Perfect. Okay, let's uh, install the connectors. Channel A. Let's find the proper position, yes. Yep. Hmm. B. Important is to say that this blue collar, which you can see on the connector, need to disappear. So once you install the connector and you start to tighten the connector, and this is important point. So the blue line disappear. So you already know that connector is more or less install properly and in the end you just tied it a bit with connector pliers if the connector doesn't move and connector pliers slip uh, you know that it is correctly tied that's why we have these connector pliers so you're not gonna damage connector or socket you will always tied it 
with the correct uh, value. And since we perform everything outside, we can perform the test, which means that we need to make FADEC test with uh, motoring. I already prepared everything. So I need to wait. Mode selector in normal. And we need to set master lever to on. And test is in process. And there is our indication. Perfect. Wait. No faults. Perfect. And master switch to off. We will do the same procedure with uh, FADEC channel B. So we'll be sure that everything is as we want it. So again, mode selector in normal and master lever to on. And we'll wait. Test in process. Now, what is this test good for? Well, basically, it will check the function of almost every component which is installed on the engine, which means that it will start to rotate. And for that reason, I need to have uh, my colleague outside who is actually my duplicate inspector and he's checking the surroundings. And for us, the most important information is that N1 indication. And since we made the test for both channels, we are sure that the function is correct. Yes. I'll wait for result. <clears throat> no faults. Very good, that's what we want. And master lever off position. Can switch on the beacon. And this is more or less it about N1 shaft speed sensor. If you have any questions, as always, write them down in the comments below. As always, I would like to ask you to don't use this as a replacement for a maintenance manual, but always use latest documentation released by manufacturer. Big thanks to Ocean Alliance that they let me record all those uh, videos for you. Big thanks to each and everybody who watched my videos and especially uh, the members. That's all from my side. My name is Tomáš, this is Recommend Maintenance with Zeto and I'll see you on the next video. Bye.